It wasn't too long ago when we considered 30 watt charging as warp speed. Well, now Realme says 150 watts is slow. Now this is the Realme GT Neo 5, also known as the Realme GT3 in some markets. Realme offers two versions of this phone. First, there's the slow charging version. And by slow, I mean 150 watts. And then there is this, the world's fastest charging smartphone as of today. This is the Realme GT Neo 5 240 watt edition. So what else can it do apart from charging rapidly? Let's take a close look in today's video. Hey guys, I'm Ash, you're watching c 4 Tech, and let's get started. Now before we proceed, a quick request, if you're on Telegram, use the link in the description to join the c 4 Tech channel so that you can keep track of all my new uploads. We've got a nice little black box, a colorful band with a model name mentioned. Look closer and you'd see that 240 watt branding, which is also present to the side and to the back. Let's now open up the box. The first thing you see inside is this black insert. This has your SIM ejector tool and the regular leaflets alongside a soft TPU case. And then underneath, that's where we find the GT Neo 5. This here is the white version. Realme does offer it in two other colors, purple as well as black. Personally, I like the purple skew the most because it's the only one that comes with those racing stripes. I mean, it kind of has a unique look going for it. Anyways, back to the box, we then have a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, and finally, here it is, that ridiculous 240 watt Superbook charger. Charging at this speed, Realme claims the 4600 mAh battery on the inside can reach full charge in just nine and a half minutes. Now, in my testing, it was a tad slower. It took this unit a little under 11 minutes to reach full charge. Not that I'm complaining, it's still stupidly fast. And while you're charging this phone, you have this LED that lights up. Realme calls this their Aura system. Now, Realme has come up with some weird designs in the past, but this, this looks pretty refined. In fact, this area where the LED is present, it's actually transparent. It has some fancy Snapdragon and camera spec branding underneath. I think it looks pretty slick. Realme has absolutely nailed it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now we have a glass sandwich design with a plastic frame in between. The back has a nice matte finish. Though slippery, it's extremely resistant to fingerprints. Just look at this, nothing, no smudges, no fingerprints whatsoever. The phone's 8.9 millimeters thick and weighs in at around 200 grams. It's pretty comfortable to use. To the front, we have a 6.74 inch AMOLED panel with a resolution slightly over Full HD+. Guys, with a Full HD panel, we get 1080 pixels this way. With Quad HD, it's 1440. On this phone, well, Realme is offering 1240, a kind of midpoint between Full HD and Quad HD, and hence they are calling it 1.5K, which makes for a pixel density of 451 pixels per inch. This is a fantastic display with colors that pop and 144 hertz refresh. It feels super smooth to use. Well, there is no fancy LTPO technology here. Realme does let you set the refresh rates on a per app basis. So say you wanna leave Chrome at 60 hertz while something else is pushed to 120 or 144, you can do just that. This also happens to be quite a bright panel with a peak brightness of uh, 1600 nits. Now add in those stereo speakers and the Neo 5 makes for a nice media experience. Now moving on to what's on the inside. This phone's powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 SoC with up to 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and up to a terabyte of UFS 3.1 storage. Well, it's not the latest 8 Gen 2, the 8 Plus Gen 1 is still a pretty solid SoC and it can handle even the most intensive titles well. Whatever game I tried running on this phone, it ran pretty smoothly. Realme seems to have done an excellent job with cooling as well. As you can see here, with the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, the stability score is almost 90%, meaning if you were to game on this phone continuously, it will retain 90% of its performance even after 20 minutes of gaming, which is very impressive. When you're in a game, you can pull this bar in and make quick changes, including switching touch optimizations and turning on Realme's GT mode. This should help improve the gaming experience. Now talking about the GT mode, you can have these LEDs light up. When you turn the mode on, you can choose between having them breathe or just flash. You can choose the speed, the colors. Realme offers 25 colors to choose from. Now, barring this, you can also have these LEDs light up when you receive an incoming call or when you plug the phone into charge or have it indicate that the battery is low. Now, if you are thinking, hey, I leave my phone by the bedside, but 
what if I forgot a charge and what if it's going below 20% and that LED starts acting up? Well, you can avoid a situation like that because they do provide us with an option to set up a time where these LEDs are active. Good stuff. I appreciate the attention to detail. Now this year is Realme UI 4 built atop Android 13. Realme standard update policy these days is three years of Android version updates and four years of security patches for premium phones like this one. Now if they've not outright confirmed that, confirmed that that's the deal with the GT Neo 5 or the GT3, but seems likely that that's gonna be the update path. Anyways, as you can see, the user experience is quite excellent. And with that, Let's talk optics. This phone, it features a triple camera array to the back. The primary is a 50 megapixel Sony IMX890, which is paired with an optically stabilized f1.9 lens. Now we've seen the sensor before in action, so it's no surprise that it does well here too. Images turned out detailed with natural colors, excellent dynamic range. Even under low light, the camera, the performance, it seemed promising. Video tops out at 4K60, I don't know why, but the footage was pleasant to look at, no complaints. The secondary camera, it's an eight megapixel ultra wide, which is nothing to write home about. It gets the job done, it fits more in a single frame. There's not enough detail to talk about it as a positive. It doesn't seem bad enough to talk about it as a negative. So it's got middle of the road kind of performance. We then have a two megapixel microscope, which in my humble opinion is pretty gimmicky. But hey, it's at least a kind of sort of fresh, fresh-ish gimmick, I'd say. On the selfie front, we've got a 16 megapixel Samsung S5 K3 P9 sensor paired with a f2.45 uh, lens. It does reasonably well with selfies. The skin tones, I feel, are slightly off, at least in my initial impressions. So that's basically it for the Realme GT Neo 5. The 240 watt SKU starts at 3199 RMB. That's about 460 US dollars converted or 38,000 Indian rupees. The 150 watt version, that starts 200 RMB cheaper meaning about 435 US dollars or 35,000 Indian rupees. Honestly, while the 240 watt charging speeds purely as a fan of technology, I like it, I appreciate it, I like the fact that it exists, but I don't see myself paying more money to actually get it, especially when you are also losing out on battery capacity. Oh yeah, the 150 watt uh, SKU, it comes with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery compared to 4600 mAh on this one. So maybe next year when they have a fast 400 watt charging option and a slow 240 watt charging option, that's where I would probably like to get my hands on the 240 watt if I'm gonna use it continuously. But for now, I think the 150 watt seems to be the better choice. But that said, the GT Neo 5 or the GT3 or whatever you wanna call it, it seems to be an excellent value phone. Uh, it's got great performance. It's got good cooling. The optics seem fair. It's got amazingly fast charging regardless of which SKU you go for. Uh, Realme seems to have put together one compelling package in this phone. At least that's what my initial impressions are uh, with the GT Neo 5. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we are at the end of today's video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And if you have any questions for me, drop a comment or hit me up on Discord. I'm more active there these days. I'll leave a link in the description as well. And thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.